In a previous video, we used the quick start method to build our first vSAN cluster. And the quick start method is great because it walks us through all the steps needed to build a successful vSAN cluster. But there's one configuration where the quick start method won't work. So let's say we've got a three node environment. We've got three SXI hosts. We want to turn into a vSAN cluster. And this is our only compute cluster. This is our only cluster in the environment. And we've got some storage where vCenter is running on top of those three nodes. For a quick start to work correctly, we have to have vCenter available and we have to have all the nodes in maintenance mode. So if you don't have multiple clusters in the environment or vCenter is not running somewhere else, we won't be able to use the quick start method. As a result, we need to manually build our vSAN cluster. And we're going to break this video down into four different sections, starting out with our networking configurations. We're starting out with networking first, so that way when we enable the setting for vSAN, that communication is already in place. We certainly can do it later, but that would cause vSAN to be in a network partition and have to go back and reconfigure like, oh, where are my buddies here in the environment? So we're going to take care of it first, so that way when we enable vSAN, it's already available for us. We're going to be creating a VM kernel port with a distributed switch. We're not going to walk through the process of creating a distributed switch. I'm making some sense you already know how to do that, and I've already pre-created that. So I'm on host one first. I'm going to click on Add Networking. I'll click on Next and select an existing network. I'll choose our vSAN network. One of the things I should have mentioned earlier was standard switches versus distributed switches. I feel like it's dove straight into the distributed switch part of it. Um, but we do support both of them. And so for your environment, if you have, let's say you've got one distributed switch with maybe two uplinks. So a little bit of a smaller environment. And if those two uplinks have vSAN traffic, VM traffic, vMotion traffic, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, we would recommend a distributed switch. And the reason we recommend a distributed switch is to take advantage of network IO control. That way you can have shares and we can make sure that each one of those services has the appropriate amount of bandwidth in a network contention situation. Distributed switches also allow for central management from vCenter. But if you're in an environment that has, I don't know, maybe six, eight, 10 NICs or uplinks, and you can allocate those towards individual services, then maybe a standard switch might better fit your situation. It really depends on what do you feel comfortable with. Uh, for this environment, we are going to use a distributed switch. So let's go and click on the next button. We support IPv4 and IPv6. For MTU, we support both standard and jumbo frames. Jumbo frames will give us a little bit better performance because we're increasing the payload every time we send it out. But it has to be enabled end to end. So from host one VM kernel port one to our standard or distributed switch to whatever our physical switch is, all the way back to another host, maybe host two, that entire path has to have Jumbo frames enabled. So if you want to enable it, just make sure we're going all the way through the process. I'm just going to use our standard frames right now just to keep it nice and simple. And then lastly, we have to check the box that says vSAN. Now we can stack the service on another NIC if we want to, or we can create them separately. For this environment or for this particular video, I'm going to create it separately. I'll then click on the next button. vSAN supports both DHCP and static IP addresses. For me personally, I like to use static IP addresses. If you do want to use DHCP, we would just recommend using a reservation. So I'm going to click on the radio button to use a static IP address. I'll then click on Next. This will allow us to review the settings before I click on Finish. With the settings configured for host 1, we need to rinse and repeat the process for host 2 and host 3. Now that our network configurations are done, we can enable vSAN on our cluster. I currently don't have a cluster created, so I'm going to right-click and create a new cluster and I'll enable the vSAN service. When we enable HA with vSAN, we shift that traffic over from the management network to the vSAN network. And that's up in a situation where if I've got a vSAN network outage, HA can be more aware of it because the HA traffic is no longer flowing across it. So if I happen to have HA traffic enabled before vSAN, I'll just have to turn it off, then turn it back on after vSAN. Next thing to do is drag our vSAN hosts or soon to be vSAN hosts into our vSAN cluster. And once I do that, vCenter will start the configuration process. It'll start pushing down those configurations for our vSAN cluster. We just have two things left to take care of. One is disks, and the last one is our health check. I'm going to click on our vSAN cluster, the one we just created, click on configure, and then head down to disk management. We can see we've got three hosts listed. These are the number of hosts in our vSAN cluster. We need to start adding our disks to it. If you're unfamiliar with disk groups, check out this video. We walk through the process of what is a disk group and how we utilize a disk group. For the next step, I'm going to click on the Claim Unused Disks. Now I'm going to just expand those two options. vSAN tries to do its best to figure out which disk should be for capacity 
and which disks should be for cache. If these are not right, we can click on the drop down and change them. If for some reason you're not seeing disks, like say your disks are not showing up, it might be because there's a partition on there. A lot of times it's disks from the manufacturer will come with some kind of like diagnostic partition on them. In that case, let me click on the cancel button and I'll show you how to erase a partition. I'm going to click on the host and then click on storage adapters. I'm using a nested lab environment, which means I have ESXi hosts running multiple ESXi hosts, not supported for a production environment, but more than sufficient for this video. And so in your environment, you'll most likely see Dell, HP, Cisco, Lenovo, et cetera, et cetera. You'll click on that SCSI controller. I'm going to click on the last one, which is the one that I happen to be using. I would then click on one of our disks that we're supposed to be using for capacity and then click on erase partitions. I don't happen to have any partitions on this disk, but this is most likely where we would see a VMFS or see a diagnostic partition if it was from the manufacturer. Just be careful it's not your boot disk that you're using for the E6i host. Uh, so if I had a partition here, I would click on OK. For this video, I'm just going to click on Cancel. Back to clicking on Claim Unused Disks. I'm happy with the disks that it picked out. We can see that it's going to create one disk for cache, one disk for capacity on three hosts. So it's going to be a consistent configuration for us. I'm going to click on the Create button. Our disk groups have been created. It took maybe 30 seconds. It wasn't a very long process. And if I click on one of our disk groups, we can see our list of disks underneath of it. We can see we've got two disks. One is for cache and one is for capacity. So this takes us up to our very last step. We've gone through the networking process. We've enabled our vSAN cluster. We just built our disk groups. Oh, and one note we should make about disk groups, I can certainly add disks later. So in this case, I've only got one cache disk and one capacity disk. I can add a maximum of seven capacity disks per disk group. And if I wanted to, I can click on our disk group and then click on add disks. And that'll allow me to add disks in the future if I don't have them today. Okay, so then we just finished creating our disk groups, going back to our agenda. The last thing is our Skyline Health Check. It used to be called our vSAN Health Check. It's now called our Skyline Health Check. I'm gonna click on our cluster and then click on the Monitor tab. I'll scroll down to our Skyline Health Check. For the Skyline Health Check, we recommend starting at the top and then working your way down. A lot of times when you fix something at the top, it'll have a filter down effect and it'll fix issues at the bottom. Usually they kind of compound on top of each other. So in this case, I've got one for the vSAN Build Recommendation Health Engine. This is letting me know that there's a newer versions of vSAN that is available, or I don't have internet connectivity of vCenter. Because this is a lab environment, I know it's the latter. My vCenter doesn't have internet connectivity. But we still can click on it to find out some more information about it. In the right-hand window that slides out, this gives me a brief synopsis or a brief overview of why this health check is being triggered. If I click on the Info tab, I can just get a little bit more information about it. And if I do have internet connectivity, my workstation does, I can click on the Ask VMware button to launch a KB article. This will walk me through the process and how I can fix it. And that's true for every single one of our Skyline health checks. We'll have a little bit of information about it, a little bit more detailed information under the Info tab. And if we click on Ask VMware, it'll launch a KB article for us. It'll tell us how to fix this particular issue. So in this case, I can either enable internet connectivity or I could download the file offline and import it manually whatever works best for the environment. For your production environment, we want to make sure you go through all the VCN health checks and make sure they're all in a green and healthy state. And this is one of the steps that's often overlooked when we build a VCN cluster and as we go forward, just doing the maintenance on the cluster or just monitoring the cluster. Keeping an eye on the Skyline health checks just to make sure that everything is in a green state. And if it's not in a green state, why is it not in a green state? Wrapping up this video, we manually built our second VCN cluster. And that's because we had vCenter running on top of our ESXi hosts. We start out by taking care of our network configurations, creating our VM kernel port, using a distributed switch, make sure that all that was in place before we enabled vSAN. For step two, we actually enabled vSAN along with DRS and HA. For step three, we took care of our disk groups. We happen to create all three of our disk groups in one go, but we certainly can do them individually if you wanted to. And we can also add disk later if we have additional capacity. And then for step four, we looked at our Skyline health checks, how we could find some additional information about it, or how we could open up a KB article to figure out how do we fix this. I hope you found this video informative. I'd like to thank you for watching.